fly. You are welcome back. I told you I will be talking about 30 ways to keep your marriage hot and sizzling. Most of the time, people find themselves in trouble in marriage. They blame the devil, they blame their families, they blame causes, they blame evil covenant, they blame so many things concerning the issue of marriage. When marriage heads for the rock. But the truth is, the problem is, People in that marriage are the ones that didn't keep the marriage hot and sizzling. So what are you supposed to do? If you really want the best marriage, the best tantalizing home, what you're supposed to do is, number one, keep on having intimate talking time. Intimate talking time. The problem of marriage is, most couples have conflict talk. They don't talk in terms of peace. They only talk when, have, when both of them are half mad and half crazy. You can never see a married couple sitting down when they are not fighting. Now let's talk about our sex life. Are you enjoying me? What do you want? How do you want it? How many times do you want it? They don't talk about that. But when they are fighting, don't touch me. Don't do this. And they begin to fight. And one funny thing is, it can, so, it can be so stupid, but it's real. A couple can be fighting about the same issue for 30 years. Couples that are fighting about sex, they kept on fighting about sex, they won't talk out, outside the, the fighting time. Immediately they say they resolve that in court, they move on, only to fight about it in, in, in two weeks to come. And they fight the battles like that, over the years, thereby eroding their love, eroding their joy, crushing their ego, crushing their marriages, turning to a, a, a plastic husband and wife instead of a romantic one. What is the answer to it? Intimate talking time. Time you resolve to just speak, just like boyfriend and girlfriend we do. Let's talk. Let's talk money. Are you having enough money? Am I satisfying you sexually? What about the children? Which of my family member is giving you trouble? What do you expect me to do? How do you expect me to do it? All these things are very important. Where you sit down on two chairs, facing each other, eyeball to eyeball, and you talk. That's intimate talking time. There's no way you are talking like that regularly you are holding marriage meetings, marriage positive meetings. It's not when you are fighting. You are not fighting. You are talking projects. You are talking love. You are talking romance. You are talking sex. You are talking fun. You are talking vacation. As many of you that are listening to me, you will discover that you've not been doing it. That is why your marriage is so difficult. Let's stop blaming the devil for this. Let's blame our ignorance. Number two, another thing you need to do to keep their marriage out and sizzling is continuous dating. Continuous dating. An average guy and guy that want to marry each other, you see them in the tree, they go out together hand in hand, you see them in the beach, you see them in the cinema, you see them, let them say, yes, I do. Suddenly, that will stop. And let me say this one to you. Immediately you start fun in your marriage. Your marriage will never be funny again. Fun is what keeps two people, two different people together for a long time. If you are not having fun, you will soon be fighting. So there will be time you just go out together, you date each other, you oh. Just make your wife, she's not cooking this weekend, she's not cooking this Saturday. You just bring her out, you visit so many places, places she will like to visit. Continual dating is the key. Uh, let me quickly say this. An average man will say, we don't have time. Yes, I agree that you, are, you don't have time. But if you don't have time for your marriage today, you will have time to see your lawyer tomorrow. You will, you, will, you will find time to see people that want to solve problems for you tomorrow. 
I will still be expecting you in my office for marriage counseling when you are in trouble. By then you will have time. So create time now. Some other people will say, oh, we don't have the money. I beg your pardon. How much do you need to buy two meat pies in, in ShopRite? An average woman does not say break a bank before you can date me. Any woman, any wife listening to me now will corroborate this. In fact, in fact some of these women can, can sponsor it. If I say, I want to take you out, but I don't have the money. Oh, she will say, I have some amount of money, I will take you out. So it's not about not having money. It's about not knowing what to do or not doing well. An average husband immediately will put a ring in the hand of a woman. That romance inside of us suddenly die. Only the long hand of the clock called sex is still working. But the second hand stop working, the hourly hand stop working. But the minute hand, which means sex, is still working. That is the problem. So continue dating your wife. Aha! Number three, dictate the love language of your spouse and speak it. Everybody has love language. Some people is time together. Some people is about touching. Some people is about hugging. Some people is about giving gifts, quality time. So if you can dictate that and you are speaking the language, you are speaking the language. If you travel abroad, you are in a French country and uh, you are not hearing anybody speaking English or anybody speaking Igbo or Yoruba, suddenly you hear somebody in the train speaking Yoruba. How will you feel if you're a Yoruba man? In the last two weeks, you've never heard anybody speaking Yoruba. Suddenly you hear somebody speaking it. At your back, you will look back inside the train. Suddenly the person becomes your pa, your family member. You want to interact, you want to intimate with the person. That is what happens when you speak the love language of each other. Dictate the love language of your wife, of your husband, and speak it. Number four, deal with POP. POP is not plaster of Paris. POP is pride of performance. Pride of our performance normally come into, into place when people have been married for 5 years, 10 years, 20 years. Suddenly they become so proud. They don't want to read any marriage book again. They don't want to attend any marriage uh, counseling again. They don't want to attend any marriage seminar again. When you ask them, uh, why you, there is a marriage seminar going on, oh, they will say, what else do people have not know? I married my wife in 1972. And that, since they got married, they, still be, they are still fighting now. Many people are so experienced in marriage, experiencing evil. Need to stop this. Nobody is too old in marriage to learn more. Drop your POP. Pride of performance is one of the greatest killers of marriage. Pride of we have been married for years. Pride of my child, I even married. Pride of, as some pastor we say, I have even joined more than 300 people together in marriage, in holy matrimony. Pride of, oh, even uh, couples are coming to me for marriage counseling. Pride of, what time do you think we don't know? You know nothing. Keep on learning. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 9 told us that a wise man will continue to learn and increase in knowledge. Your understanding is outdated. Get another one. Get books. Read books. I have written more than 100 books on marriage, but I'm still learning about marriage. Marriage is a mystery. Nobody can unravel it in one lifetime. You keep on learning about your spouse. Your spouse is changing. Environment is changing. When I got married, there was no mobile phone. I need to learn how to undo mobile phone in my marriage. When I got married, there was no internet. I need to know how to handle internet in my marriage. When I, when I got married, there are so many technologies that are around now that were not there at the time I got married. Oh, we need to wake up and don't allow POP to destroy your marriage. Number five, do you want your marriage to be hot and sizzling? 
these are little, little things you need to do. One of them is keep on holding hands. Hold the hand of your wife, hold the hand of your, wife, of your husband, even when there's no need for it. You are going on the street, hold dance. You are sitting down in the house, so hold dance. Practice it for three weeks and you will see a new marriage. It is priceless. It is costless. You don't pay for it. There is no cholesterol in it. You don't pay tax for it. It's free. Just hold your hands. But check it. Do you know that people that fight, they don't hold hands? Do you know that only jolly people, loving people hold hands? Do you know that our hands communicate love? Do you know that children always want somebody to hold their hands? Do you know that one of the things uh, widows uh, 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 miss most of the time in their life, there's nobody to touch them, there's nobody to hug them, there's nobody to hold them. You are still married. These are little, little things to put into your marriage and you will see your marriage turning around. Hold hands and enjoy your marriage. I will be right back. You are welcome back. Another thing you need to do <laughs> to make your marriage great is to go in hug regime. Turn hugging to a ritual in your marriage. Esper told us that couples that hug regularly, they, um, they will be much more peaceful, more, more romantic than couples that do not hug. Do you know something about hog? It's free. Do you know another thing about hog? When you give one, you get one in return. So why are you not giving it? Why are you not taking it? Experts told us that to make your marriage great, there should be at least four hogs in your marriage per day. Two in the morning, two in the night. Two in the morning. Some people say, oh, eh, our children must not, must not see it. You are wrong. You are not having sex in their presence. I'm not talking about sexual hugging. I'm just talking welcome hugging, group bag hugging, chest touching chest, genuinely, lovingly, patting each other at the back. It will make a whole lot of difference in your family. Go on that hug regime number seven. Be playful with each other. Playful. High five. Beat each other, boom, boom. Rest on each other. That's what marriage is all about. That is all marriage is all about. If you are not playful in that marriage, you cannot be joyful in that home. If you are not playful in that marriage, you cannot be joyful in that marriage. If you are not playful in that marriage, you cannot be joyful in that marriage. When you are not playful, you will be plastic. You can't be romantic. Plastic marriage is very close to traumatic marriage. So we have three kinds of marriages. Plastic marriages, traumatic marriage, romantic marriages. If you want to make a plastic marriage to be romantic, playfulness is the key. The Lord God will bless your marriage in the name of... Be playful. Number eight, toss each other regularly. Touch. You are just sitting down, maybe in church, your hand is on the leg of each other intentionally. You are sitting down in the bus, in the car. Your hand is on the is, You are not having sex. There's nothing. Just, you're just touching each other on the shoulder. You place your hand. You are talking to your husband. Can you hear this? And you place your hand on the shoulder. You, can you hear this? And you place the hand. The, the wife places the hand on the, on the shoulders of the husband. Just bringing a point home. But some husbands are so bad, if their wife mistakenly put the hand on, the, on their shoulder, they will say, are you mad? You can't share any. There's something wrong with you. Who is your mate? They can't play with them. You are wrong, brother. Don't turn your life into a battlefield. Turn that marriage around. If you just do all these little, little things, you will see a better marriage in a short while. Number nine, kiss regularly. I mean K-I-S-S. Kiss regularly. Make it part of your game. Make it part of your fun. Make it part of your joy. I'm not talking about kissing that little sex. Even good morning kiss, welcome kiss, bye 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 kiss. Even wherever you go, as you get back home, a good hug, a, 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 a short kiss on the mouth. It will turn your marriage around. 
you'll be expecting it when you are going back home. You'll be your wife will be will be looking forward to it. Your husband will be looking forward Twitter to it. And your marriage will be the best for it. I know it. Your marriage is about to turn around, touch each other, kiss each other. Ah, it will turn your marriage around forever. Number 10, get intentional. Get intentional. Your marriage cannot succeed at autopilot level. Get intentional. Play intentionally. Talk intentionally. Joke intentionally. Throw intentionally. Don't allow your marriage to pilot itself. Marriage is like a car. It cannot drive itself. Marriage is like a garden. It cannot grow itself. It is what to sow into it, what to plant into it, that it will yield to you. It's a law of life. So you've left your, your garden unattended to for too long. It is time for you to come to your senses and begin to tend to it. You don't help your marriage with just prayer and fasting. You help it by the intentional. Thank you for joining me in this episode. I believe you've gotten some tips to turn your marriage around. My name is BC Adewale. I'll be seeing you same time, same station next week by the grace of God. And don't forget to follow me on our social media at BC Adewale. That is to say IG at BC Adewale. BC Adewale. Even YouTube at BC Adewale. Remember, your family is very important. Pay attention to your marriage.